What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. And I want to just start by saying you look absolutely amazing today. Wow, that's so sweet of you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I thought you was going to say the same to me because before we came on, you did mention how my blue hat that you did buy me for Christmas brings out my eyes. And it reminded you of something in college that I used to wear. I mean, I did, but, you know, I already said that, and that was just special for you. So. Oh, it was for me? Yeah. But I wanted everybody to hear. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But anyway, uh, welcome to another episode of Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. We are pumped about what we're going to be sharing for with you today. Um, today specifically is going to be for married people uh-huh. and those who are engaged to be married, those who want to be married one day, <laughs> those who <laughs> know somebody who's married, and this is what they're going to need. We're going to be talking about five things that every married couple Ooh. must hear. And I'm putting an emphasis on must hear because there are some tools that you need in your toolbox mm-hmm. before you get into holy matrimony so that you don't have a train wreck on your hand. Absolutely. And that's what we had. Yeah. You know? So we've been married for 23 years, and uh, I always say it's been the best 21 years. Um, of my life, the first two years was horrible, but now you're doing a whole lot better, sweetheart. I agree. It's not, that's a true statement that you say. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. The first two years were hor- horrible um, for me personally. I don't think I felt like you made them horrible for me. Mm-hmm. The first two years for me weren't horrible because of marriage. They were Uh horrible because I had to get myself together. Yeah. That's that's a word on its own. But the marriage was horrible, but you take the responsibility of your well, part that you played. Yeah, I'm not taking the full responsibility, but I uh-huh. had a I had a big What percentage do you think uh-huh. part that you played? Um, I mean at least 50%. Ah, okay. I mean at least 50%. 50%. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. Why? What was your part? Um, my part was, you know, uh-huh. I had to get myself together, so I was depressed. Uh-huh. Um, I was just have, and, and that's like the full story. I was depressed uh-huh. and I had to fight my way out of depression, uh-huh. um, to take care of my own life, my own thoughts, mm-hmm. my own self before I could even try to take care of my husband mm-hmm. and your thoughts mm-hmm. and, you know, to be able to serve you, provide you, do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that was the problem for me. Uh, something just came to mind before we get into today's, um, the meat of what we're talking about uh-huh. today. Um, There are married couples out there who their spouses deal with depression Mm -hmm. and um, they're going to therapy and they're actually been told by therapy, therapist or counselors, hey, get yourself together first before you even focus on your marriage. And I know one one married couple that's been struggling for three or four years Uh and the spouse has been dealing with depression as they're getting themselves together, but they haven't been sowing any seed towards their marriage. And the marriage is struggling and basically over Mm -hmm. because they've been getting advice to focus on themselves Mm -hmm. and not themselves and their marriage at the same time. What, What do you think about that? Ooh, I think it's, you know, I personally didn't Uh have that experience in in myself. Uh Let's put it that way. If I had done that, I don't know if our marriage would have survived. Uh Um, I did have to focus on myself a whole lot, Mm -hmm. but it was more from the focus of we're together. Mm -hmm. And I understood that if I got myself together, then we would be better together. But it was never separate from you. Mm -hmm. It was never alone from you. Mm -hmm. Meaning that it was my responsibility. Mm -hmm. I had to say, okay, I am going to pray, believe God, journal, Mm -hmm. um, take medicine, whatever it is that I needed to do to Mm -hmm. get myself together. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't, I was in charge of that. I couldn't, you can't do that for me. But, and I'm telling you that I feel like that advice is not great Mm -hmm. advice. It might be secular advice. It might be people who don't have God at the center of their relationship. And I think there is a place for you getting yourself together. But at the same time, when the two become one, it's no longer just me. There has to be a level of we that's there as well. Meaning that I'm getting myself together so that we can get us together. Team Clayton. It's, it's, uh, yeah, Uh because we, you know, when I was fighting cancer and mm-hmm. going through chemotherapy, that was something that I had to do on my own. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I had to do that on my own. You can't fight it for me, but you can help me. Yeah. And so I didn't say, okay, I had three kids, um, two teenagers and, you know, an 11 year old. Um, I couldn't be like, okay, I'm just going to place my whole family on the side right now. Mm-hmm. I can't concern. I'm not concerned yeah. with their homework. Um, I can't parent them, mm-hmm. you know, my marriage. I'm just going to put that to side my ministry, everything. I couldn't just lay everything down, Mm -hmm. um, but I had to include my family in on this journey. Hey kids, this is what mommy's going through right now, but God's going to bring us out. 
And your kids are tougher than what you think. They, oh, they, they sure but are. But there's a scripture that comes to mind when you said that. There's a scripture in Nehemiah where it talks about when Nehemiah came back to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. he had to fight with one hand and mm -hmm. build with the other. Yeah. And there are seasons of your life where that has to be your MO. Yeah. That I'm going to fight this cancer. I'm going to fight yep. this depression. Yep. But I still got to build my life. Yep. I'm not going to be able to just fight with both hands. Right. I'm going to have to fight with one hand right. and build with another. And, and I looks, think that's where a lot of us are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that sums it up. You mm -hmm. have to fight and build at the same time. But what it looks like, it, it looks different. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be, you're not going to be building at 100% capacity. Right. You know what I mean? Right. That's where you, you know, it, things might get messy. Yeah. The house might be messy. Yeah. Um, you might not be able to do everything that you used to be do. You might be able to do 50% of what you used to do, 20% mm -hmm. of what you used to do, but you have to build and fight at the same time. I love it. Well, we coming in hot already, guys. That was just the warm up, the appetizer. Um, you know, of course, thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoy what we do, we would love for you to be a part of our online community. We're building an online family. We don't want you to do life alone. That's why we call this doing life with Ken and Tabitha. And our goal in this podcast and on this show is simply to share with you our wins, our losses, our ups and downs. And our hope is that you'll be able to find God's principles that you can apply to your life. I always say, take the meat, leave the bones. Absolutely. Our hope is to give you a whole lot of meat. Make sure that you subscribe right now. If you're on podcast, you can download our podcast. We believe that caring is sharing and sharing is caring. And to make sure that you share today with somebody that it can be a blessing to. I want to jump into the meat of today. And I want to talk go. about five things that every married mm -hmm. couple must hear. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to go for it. Number one is to expect difficulties. Ooh, expect difficulties. That's good. And I got a story with this mm -hmm. one. So um, I went to my, my therapist. And you know, we believe in therapy. Mm -hmm. We believe in doing the natural, believe in God for the supernatural. And I went in and I did what I think you should do if you have a good therapist, which is vent. Absolutely. I'm literally paying somebody to listen to my pain and my problems. I love it. So he, he's tied down to it. And so I was like, well, this is bad. And this, this, that, and the other, and I'm going through this and the people are this and the church is this and the money and the finances and marriage. I gave them all to him. And he says, Ken, you know what your problem is? He says that you don't expect difficulties. And as long as you don't expect difficulties, you're never ready for warfare. He says that the people who don't expect difficulties, they usually overdrink mm -hmm. or they overeat because they just want to be happy. Mm -hmm. And because they're looking and they're actually making happiness an idol, they don't expect that life is hard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I kind of got biblical with him and I said, well, um, didn't the Bible say that God would give me the desires of my heart? And if I ask anything in his name, he'll do and all that. Yeah. He says, but also the Bible says Jesus himself says, as long as you're in this world, you're going to have trouble. But then he says, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. So Jesus told us mm -hmm. that we are going to have difficulties. And so it was great advice because now I've learned to expect difficulties. Mm -hmm. So if people are like Pastor Ken, I got this business idea. I'm like, praise God. Let me see the business plan. But that's going to be difficult. Right. People say, Pastor Ken, I'm about to get married. Look, look at my ring. I say, praise God. You know, that's going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. People say, Pastor, we're expecting a baby. You know, praise God. I say, when's the due date? I'm celebrating with you. But that's going to be on. difficult. And I think sometimes we don't know that the things that we really want, there's going to be difficulty mm -hmm. with it. But we've been created for difficult things. We sure have. Marriage is difficult. We've been created to overcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Marriage is difficult. But we've been created for this difficulty. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about it. You know, I, um, I think maybe it depends on how you've grown up. I grew up in the projects, nothing came easy. Everything was always difficult. Mm -hmm. So for the first 18, 20, 23 years of my life, it was like difficult. I didn't know what joy was. I didn't know that, oh, you mean, you know, you life can be easy? Mm -hmm. You know, like life doesn't have to be so hard. Mm -hmm. And so I find that, you know, there's a little bit of a silver lining in, in all of that in that now in my adult life, mm -hmm. I just, I'm not surprised at difficulties. Like mm -hmm. I don't break under the pressure. Mm -hmm. um, like if something happens, you know, sometimes we're, we're teaching our kids things and, you know, they'll say, oh, well, you know, but, but they said this and, and they're, they're um, maybe sad because somebody said something bad about them or, mm -hmm. you know, one of their classmates call them a bad name and I'm like baby well what you gonna do about it mm -hmm. okay okay that made you feel bad but what is that is that a mindset that you have what's that um I think it probably is a mindset your mindset is like 
I'm going to overcome. I'm Absolutely. going to do it. Watch me win. Absolutely. Did you always have that or did you develop that? Um, I think I developed it. Mm -hmm. um, and I could have, I could have all, you know, always had it. I remember being a child mm -hmm. and being a girl and I had a bunch of boy cousins mm -hmm. and they would always say, Tabby, you can't do it because you're a girl. You're a girl. And that would fire me up. And I would, you know, wrestle them. Mm -hmm. I would race them. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, there was only one boy in the whole projects who could beat me. I remember his name. He was Tommy Wilson. He was so fast. But I was, be, you know, I would race, fight the boys, whatever, because I hated for somebody to tell me that I can't do it. And that was without God. You know, mm -hmm. of course, God created me and put that in me. So I think maybe I did always have some sort of fight in me. Mm -hmm. But even growing up in my family and things like that, we didn't say I love you. And that's a whole other story, which create which creates other issues, um, which I had to overcome later on in life. But now mm -hmm. that I've overcome those other issues, it really the gift in all of it is just that it's OK. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if somebody does something in traffic or somebody doesn't like me on social media and somebody calls me a name or whatever, wow. or something doesn't go my way, like so I like really don't care. I really don't care. Life listen, is good. Did you I had see to, the room yeah. that I woke up I, in this morning? I had my to head is listen. Soft I had to learn that. I had to learn that. I remember my pastor years ago when I told him I was called to pastor. He quoted a scripture where David said to Solomon, my son is tender, but the work is great. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what is this brother talking about? And he would tell me that I'm going to have to help you learn how to ride the elephant. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? And now 20 years into ministry, I realized that in leadership, you have to be tender mm -hmm. and you also have to be tough. You're right. And you have to be tough. And you also have to be tender and you can't get so tough that you're no longer tender and you can't be so tender that you are concerned mm -hmm. about what every hater and naysayer and critic That's has to right. say, because opinions are like noses. Everybody has one. That don't mean I want yours on my face. Right. And so when you really grow, you develop this balance of being tender and being tough. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful now for those scars. I'm thankful now. God is even breaking my heart for my critics and people who might not um, enjoy me or say, you know, you, 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 you get onto a public platform and people just take shots at you just because that's what their sport is to do. And now my heart is broken for them. And I'm like, God bless them. Yeah. God, I love them. God, forgive them for they don't know what they do. And I can't live my life at another person's revelation, but we got to move on. But do you feel like marriage is difficult? Um, I think that, yes. I mean, I would say yes, it is. In which way? Um, it's difficult. Yeah, it's not difficult in every way. Uh, I think it's difficult when it comes to having to care for someone else other than yourself, mm -hmm. because in marriage, you put the other person first. Mm -hmm. And so if I just want to come home at night and, you know, ignore, just be by myself and go to bed and put the covers over my head. I mean, I can do that, but that wouldn't be really responsible for me in my marriage. Mm -hmm. Like at least let me check in with you. Hey babe, how are you wow. doing? I'm really tired tonight. Do you mind if I just go to bed and put the covers over my head? Yeah. Like there's a communication that takes place there, mm -hmm. but now you could be like, Hey babe, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to be home late. I really need you to go pick up, you know, our son from basketball right. practice. You know, can you do now? I wanted to go home, but now because I love you, yeah. I'm going to be like, yeah, I'll pick up that responsibility. Let me uh -huh. go do it. Yeah. I would venture to say that marriage is difficult in many aspects, mm -hmm. combining of money, um, dealing with in-laws, mm -hmm. um, sexual uh, rhythms being different, um, us being I'm a man and you're a woman, meaning that I, I just look at life differently, mm -hmm. but now the two have become one. Um, just the I, way we live. The, yeah. Just being different. Like, well, I would also say this warfare. Mm -hmm. I think that you can shack and you can live together and the devil will leave you alone. Like, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can be boyfriend and girlfriend and the devil don't, will leave you alone. Satan hates marriage because uh -huh. marriage is the foundation of the family. And it was God's idea to bring Eve to Adam and Adam to Eve. And I believe that Satan hates the institution mm. of godly marriage so much that as soon as you say I do, you have a target on your back and you need to know how to war right. And so we just we're not here to give you all the answers today, but we're here to say expect difficulties, like normalize it and be like, you know what? I can handle it. His grace is sufficient for me. Yeah, It's not a big deal. Yeah. And to know that any married person is experiencing the same difficulties that you're experiencing. You know, right. like we all have challenges. Right. Sometimes it, we feel like we're the only one. Well, you know, I'm the only one going through this in my marriage. It's really not true. Other right. people have been through it and mm -hmm. have overcome it. Right. 
and you can too. For the second thing, I would say don't over romanticize marriage. Mm -hmm. That's the second thing that I believe that every married couple needs to hear is don't over romanticize mm -hmm. marriage. For example, um, when you grew up as a little girl, how did you look at marriage? Now, you didn't have a good mm -hmm. example of marriage necessarily around you. But when you thought about marriage, it was probably like a the, princess, like the Ken and Barbie. And then you yes. got yourself Ken a Ken. and Barbie. Yes, I know. I got myself a Ken. But yeah, definitely Ken and Barbie out of mm -hmm. Barbie House growing up. That was wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, but it was like the, the Disney princess, like the knight in shining, the armor. knight in shining armor. So I was going to come and mm -hmm. rescue you mm -hmm. from all of your past yep. trauma yep and then i cause more trauma yeah because we sometimes at over first you were a knight uh -huh. but then you became you know it's just like the butterfly feeling goes away and it's just like you became normal you know like mm -hmm. any other person it's like yeah. oh well that's where many people are you start off especially as a man the man kind of loves the chase mm -hmm. and we will be completely doing everything i'm talking about opening up doors for you buying you your favorite flower oh, yeah. buying you i mean going out for reservations getting you your the best restaurant being on our p's and q's and it's amazing how marriage has a way of just ripping off that <laughs> band-aid or blindfold it's like you show up on a white <laughs> horse right and you have your shiny armor on uh -huh. and we're like yes we love you yes i'll take your name yes i'll be your wife and then three months later what happened to the white horse what happened to the shiny armor that, that seems Yikes. very um very one-sided i think <laughs> there's a lot of ladies doing the same thing i'm talking about she show up and she got her figure looking right. She in shape. She got her makeup, her hair done. Uh, I didn't even know that you passed gas for uh, the first three years. You uh, never passed gas in front of me for three years. Now it's like at least weekly. I'm like, hey, that man. is not true. <laughs> it's at you least monthly. Tell it's the at truth. least monthly. You be sleep. I'd be like, what is going on? That would be in my sleep. It would never be on purpose. <laughs> Why is there a problem? Because Listen, I just never, this is never. Natural. This I is know natural. it's natural. I'm always like, listen, if there's gas, it needs I to be passed. I understand, but gonna, there's everybody's some things feel that my husband, I don't care if I'm married yeah. to you for 50 years, you are just not going yeah. to partake in those But I things. think that's the thing. When we romanticize marriage, we don't realize that we're marrying a human being. We're Absolutely. not marrying somebody off of Instagram. And so the person's breath is not always fresh. Yeah. Their stomach is not always acting right. Mm -hmm. Their attitude is not always. See, marriage is such an inner court relationship Absolutely. where I'm inviting you in because I trust that you trust me mm -hmm. enough to come into my inter sanctum so mm -hmm. to say of my life and I'm going to show you the good the bad the ugly and everything in between yeah. what a wonderful privilege that we begin to take it advantage of privilege. and then we compare somebody's highlights to the low lights of what we live with because mm -hmm. of this romanticized piece mm -hmm. on marriage I would I would venture to say marriage is gritty it is. It's gritty. Mm -hmm. It ain't for the faint hearted. Mm -hmm. It's for the people that's like, we're going to ride or die together. It's going to be us together. You got cancer. You don't have cancer. It's going to be us. Amen. You gain 300 pounds. It's still going to be us. Mm -hmm. you, you, whatever. It's going to be us. We got to. It's our team. Yeah. And I don't know if people have that that mindset. Or even have that kind of conversation. Because mm -hmm. like you and I in our like, you know, maybe it's on date night or maybe it's a Tuesday night and we're just watching TV. We might have been inspired by a movie and we'll be like. You know, if you come and start saying something, you know, like, babe, I got your back. And we'll start talking to each other and just like really be each other's cheerleaders mm -hmm. and fight for one another and be like, come on, babe, what you want to do? You want me to go get my coat? We're going to go outside. We're going to yeah, fight I right call, now. I call her, I call her <laughs> it's Scrappy. It's a joke, but. I call her Scrappy Doo. You remember the show, the cartoon I'm Scooby Doo? I'm definitely Scrappy. And then he had this little dog that was like, where is, where is Scooby? Where is Scooby? Let, let me at him. Let me at him. Let me at him. She my Scrappy Doo. And there's just something about being married to Scrappy. Like, that's just a wonderful trait to have. Because as a man, I just feel like I got so many pressures and responsibilities um, as a minority, mm -hmm. as a man of God, as mm -hmm. a pastor, as a parent. I halfway know what I'm doing half the time. And I'm trying to figure this thing out. And the world is trying to um, um, tear me down. It's a horrible thing to come home. And then my help meets tearing me down yeah. too. And even if I'm not doing the best job, just get behind my back and say, I'm with you, baby. You're all that. You're you're all that in a bag of chips. I got your back. You're right. There's mm -hmm. this meme or this kind of like thing that's going around on social media where there's a woman in the background. I think she's being interviewed by like Dr. Phil and he's saying, look at him. <laughs> look at your this is your man do you support him and she's like mm, and he's like doing something ratchet like scratching his stomach yeah and, I do. 
think I think you yeah I did I posted something of you yeah I was gonna say which was hilarious but it's the woman saying and and now wives are putting their man on there and he's doing crazy stuff one guy jumps off of a roof into a snowbank and he's like completely covered in snow it's just hilarious (laughs) but I think it's so funny because the wife is like "Mm -hmm, mm mm-hmm Mm-hmm. That's him. He's mine. Yeah, he's my man. The I'm going to stick with him. Your intelligent and I think, choice. Well, well, it, it's just like that's where the scrappiness is because you don't have to have a certain p- kind of personality or anything. It's just like with your with with your kids. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if let somebody do something to your kids, Mama Bear yeah. will rise up yeah. in a heartbeat. Yeah. Well, it's the same way with my man or with you know your wife. Yeah. That no, we fight for one another. Yeah. Okay, you can personally i don't care what you say about me but don't talk about my man because yeah. we you know i'm gonna have a problem scrappy yeah come on that's a word <laughs> i'll give you number three three things that every married couple must hear number three would be don't sweat the small stuff mm. and i think you know how the scripture says it's better to be in the housetop instead of to be with a nagging woman yeah um let's just extrapolate extrapolate I don't know how to say the word, extrapolate Extrapolate. the principle because I don't want to make it just Mm -hmm. like women can nag. I think men can nag as well. Or the principle is with somebody that's always just at you. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God, like I can't do anything right here because it's the small stuff. You left the lights on. You didn't do this. You didn't pay this on time. Did you, did you, did you turn this off? Did you put the AC on? Did you walk the dogs? And I think that marriage Mm. is made up of tons of small things. Absolutely. And sometimes we win the battle, but we lose the war. Can you talk to me about small things? It's so sad. I mean, (laughs) the... The temptation is real, though. I mean, it's real to nag. And and why is that, though? <laughs> I, uh, I think, you know, for me, I you know where Jesus, the, the Martha, Martha, Martha. You, yeah. You worry about so many things. It's just like the Martha syndrome where she's like, look, there's these people in the house. I got to feed, you know, I, I got to cook for everybody. I, I got to clean and like, you know, what's going, you know, and she's like goes to Jesus and complains and like, you know, my sister, she's not even helped me. I'm the only one doing all this stuff. And he says, you know, she's worried about the one thing that is important. Yeah. You're worried about too many other things that don't really matter right now. And so mm. I tried to apply that Ooh. principle when it comes to family and marriage and things like that to, mm. okay, what What's the God thing? Because you can be doing a whole bunch of good things. It's good to take out the trash. It's good to not have dishes in the sink. It's good to not leave your socks in the bed. It's good for all of these things. Mm -hmm. But what's the one thing that matters in this moment? And um, try to focus on that because it's so easy to get caught up in all of the little things. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes I can just hear Jesus saying, Tabitha, Tabitha, Tabitha. Tabitha. Yeah. but you know, it's really real. And yeah. you know, you just, now we've lived together for 23 years. Mm-hmm. And if I was to say, Hey, um, make a list of the things you think your wife struggles with the most mm-hmm. that would probably be in my top three. Yeah. Why is that? Do you think that that is a woman thing or is it a personality thing or, or is it just a you thing? Um, it, it could be personality. I think it, it sometimes it goes to the role of a woman because often the woman woman's responsibility is in the home is to take care of the home. Mm-hmm. Um, we're the ones that decorate the homes. Mm-hmm. We're the ones that say where the dishes go in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. We're the ones who take care of our kids. Sometimes, and, and th- most times, most of the time, mm-hmm. you know, it's that. Mm-hmm. And so, for example, like I just had to really, I mean, it was probably last week. Mm-hmm. I had to say, okay, Tabitha, get it together. You cannot come down here. Um, I would come. Our kids are supposed to clean the kitchen at night and they just haven't been cleaning the kitchen and they got their own things going on sports and things like that and I had been coming down so peaceful in the morning I get up I spend time with Jesus everything's great and then it'd be like six o'clock a.m. I'm in the kitchen furiated Mad. and and I mean just in fur- like so angry uh, because I can smell the dishes in the kitchen before I get there okay I see the dishes I'm like they didn't do this they didn't take out the trash the, the floor probably- is dirty you probably All of this walked stuff. down the steps angry. No, I didn't. Okay. You, until you turned the corner. When I turned the corner, kitchen. I said that. But here's, and, and this is this is my answer to like why it might happen. Um, it's because what I realized for me, it's just, I have so many things on my plate for that day. And I wasn't expecting to do those things. Do you know what I mean? It was just kind of like, this is preventing me from doing what I really want to do. And it just felt like, an it feels like an overload. But the thing is, when you have kids, you always doing stuff that you don't want to do. You're so right. Somebody left their lunch. Somebody left their shoes. 
somebody didn't do what they were supposed to do. It's like this consistent, until they reach a certain age, it's this consistent thing where you're basically caring for other exactly. individuals. And, and well, let me tell you how I fixed it, because let me tell you what I've done in the past. And some, you know, this is going to be this is going to help someone. So I come down now. I'm mad at the kids because they don't do anything. And so the next the very next person for me to get angry with is you, because I'm like, well, where is Ken? What is he? I just need him to get the kids. He's and because now I see the dish that you left in the sink. Right. So I put you in the category right along with the kids. Oh, wow. And so I you didn't know, even know this. Tell us now you're just mad at everyone. Mm. And so what I did was, um, ju I mean, I feel like it's like three days ago, honestly, but mm -hmm. I just said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to quit. I'm not going to be, cause this is making everyone else is okay with this. Mm. I'm the only one that's tripping. So I was just like, I'm just going to clean it up myself. And I removed the expectation. Mm -hmm. Okay. If there, before I go to bed at night, I'm going to make sure that the kitchen's clean, Yeah. whether I get the kids to help me or whether right. I do it myself so that when I come downstairs, I don't have this expectation mm -hmm. and it's not like thrown in my face. <laughs> oh my gosh, you have to clean the kitchen now. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And so I just did it myself. I handled it. And now, I mean, it's, just like problem solved I don't have that issue anymore it's wonderful yeah I mean that's that's a mouthful but it's true that's a whole nother you just have to work it out yeah you know what I'm saying yeah. like you have yeah. to work it out the issue sometimes the issue is it's you right. it's not that the kids are being messy or dirty or whatever that's what kids well they're do. just living and that's and your what husband, kids do he's just living as well and right. he had, everybody has their own uh responsibilities and challenges <laughs> for the sake of time we got two more that I want to get through so number four would be stay flexible let your marriage breathe yep. and let it grow and I think that that's why, have you ever seen people who are married for like 20 years and mm -hmm. then they get divorced, married for 30 years and, and get divorced? I think part of that is that they grow apart mm -hmm. because nobody has taught them how to grow together. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that we are kind of, we, we're all changing and somehow we have to change together over the years. So the woman that I met when you were 23 mm -hmm. is not the woman now at 43 44, 45, 46, about to cele celebrate another why birthday. To, why are you saying it like I'm just saying it like, because I was going to do plus 20. I was going to do from 43. 42, 42. Well, Let I was doing on. from 23 to 43. It seemed like that was the way to go. Which, but then I, I went to 45, 46. Yeah. I'm going to be like 75. So if you love like, it, why yes. did you say that? I just, I, I'm just, I'm just wondering why you are saying it like that. I was just saying it because as a communicator, I like to do things in 10s or 20s. And I can't came to 43 and then <laughs> yeah, realized that you're nowhere close to 43 you're you just turned no you're about to turn this saturday 47 and fine too and better than ever go ahead <laughs> putting the icing on and i'm only 44 praise god so i feel like like i'm super i'm forever young because i married an you older do, woman you do you act it's like, like dog baby you 45 already <laughs> You about to be 50. I'm chilling over here. <laughs> uh, but, you know. If we were to count years in the spirit, though, I feel like you're already 65. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've always been way older than what you, than what I am. natural years. Yeah, but I, I'm a player from the Himalayas. Oh, I'm, well, I'm really from West Virginia, so I say I'm macking from the Appalachian. Ha! <laughs> okay. But anyway, you got to stay flexible, you know, yeah. and um, let your marriage grow. Um, so you're not the same person at 26 yeah. that you are at 46. Yeah. So um, you you you're, you like different foods. You like mm -hmm. different activities. You think about the world differently. And we've been able to grow together. Yeah. And that would be my advice to figure out how to do that. Can you talk to that at all? Um, I think that, you know, the best way to grow together is communicate with one another. Uh -huh. um, we do a great thing of um, having date nights. Mm -hmm. So every week there's a time where we are if we need to vent, we vent to him. Hey, I know this is like, a, I have a bad attitude. This is the wrong perspective, but can I just vent on you for a moment? Right. And we're there sharing the intimate moments of our lives together, mm -hmm. whether, you know, there are times where I was at home mm -hmm. um, because we had a newborn baby mm -hmm. and you were just like traveling here and there and, and all around the, the world. Yeah. Um, but I, you would still come back mm -hmm. and tell me, what did you do? What did you learn? What did, and we would have these conversations. So we would learn through each other, with each other, from each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one way, mm -hmm. just communicating right. uh, with each other mm -hmm. uh, is how we just stayed. And I also think that we got to get better at dating um, each other and like 
not letting our worlds become too divided to where, well, I like golf and you hate it. I think yeah. still somehow, like if I'm so into basketball, like you should figure out how to be into basketball. Yeah. Or if you are just so into travel, I don't want you just traveling with your girlfriends. You're going to take me. Yeah. Somehow we have to still be willing to sow the seed to enjoy what the other person enjoys mm -hmm. so that we don't have two different lives. We've done that very well. Yeah. Uh, there's not like, I don't know, like many trips that you've t t taken, like it's just you and your guys or like me and my girls. That's another I've never... topic for another day. I've always been interested in how married people want to spend time with other people other than their spouse yeah. without bringing their spouse along. Yeah. And maybe um, you can put a comment here and let us know what we should talk about. I always just thought that was strange. Yeah. I'm not saying that it's bad or wrong. I've always just been like, oh, really? Somebody said, well, yeah, I'm going to Europe. I'm like, who are you going with? Oh, you know, Steve and John and Billy from college. We're going to meet up and go to Europe. Uh -huh. It ain't no way. Uh -uh. I'm going some seven, 10 day vacation without taking my good thing. And ain't no way I'm agreeing to it. I'm like, baby. I mean, you only have so much time in the year, though. So much money, so, so much time, you're so much spend vacation. Ten days in Europe or seven days Psh. in the Bahamas with somebody else, you know. And I mean, okay. I'm, I'm just trying to get it because I've been married so long, and I know that there are people on here that are like, "Well, we do that, and it's no big deal. We have a good time. It's my sisters, it's my auntie, and everything." And maybe that's true, yeah. but for yeah. me, there is nobody in the world that I want to spend more time with than my wife. And I feel like you feel the same way Absolutely. about me. And I know that there are people listening and watching. They're like, well, I don't have that same sentiment. Maybe we should start grow, grow, growing there Absolutely. and trying to get there. I want to give you the fifth point. Divorce is not an option because we could spend a lot of time okay. on that. And there are a lot of people today, the divorce rate is 50 percent. Mm -hmm. um, 50 percent of people who think that it's going to be till death does its part. It's not. And it's the same statistic in the church and outside the church. Mm -hmm. And that's sad mm -hmm. because we have the power of the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to be filled with understanding submission and grace and mercy and all of those things. But unfortunately, many of us have not matured emotionally and spiritually to really get kingdom results mm -hmm. in these divine connections and relationships. And so for us, we had to divorce divorce. Mm -hmm. I remember we used to get in fights back in the day and I would just be so mad. I'm leaving and I would just leave. And in my mind, I'm not coming back, but I had nowhere else to go. <laughs> and when I come back, I'm just going to give you the silent treatment or I'm going to weaponize sex. And none of that brings any good fruit in your life. And I think my word for people who are listening is that you have to stop threatening leaving. Mm -hmm. Stop threatening divorce. Stop threatening separation because that means I got to stay here and we're going to have to figure this out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's never been like a thing for me. Divorce. I never, never thought about divorce mm -hmm. uh, because I've always just been, I think, maybe loyal. Mm -hmm. um, and so well, that's the when we got married, I mean, we actually have this thing going on between the both of us. And I think I'm going to do it just because you want to. But you wanted to renew your vows. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, well, I don't want to renew my vows. I meant it when I said it the first time. And you're like, uh, well, uh. but I'm like, that's no, I. Mm -hmm. I, I know I said I did like I meant Do you it remember your vows? That was 23 years ago. Um, I remembered. I might not remember word for word, but I That's remember all the I'm commitment saying. and the vow that I made uh -huh. between me and you and God. OK, OK. Well, so anyway, uh -huh. my point was to say that I'm just like loyal like mm -hmm. that. Um, I don't see me ever like divorcing my kids. Mm -hmm. I don't see me. I mean, I, I have. Um, you know, have uh, not the best relationships with family members and things like that, but I'm not even divorcing my family members. It's yeah. like, I love you. You do. You know, you are um, high in forgiveness. You're high in love more so than even me when it comes to um, people who've done you wrong and people who've betrayed you. You still have a big soft spot in your heart. And um, I've been over the years trying to cause you to protect those spots but, um, that causes um, toxins and uh, problems and things like that. But I, I appreciate that about you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the fact that you are quick to forgive. Um, I appreciate the fact that you are fiercely loyal. And if we could teach wives to be fiercely mm -hmm. loyal, what could happen to the divorce rate? Mm -hmm. If we could teach husbands to be fiercely loyal, and it's a, it's a fruit of the spirit. Galatians 5 talks about faithfulness. Mm -hmm. And I don't see it 
I don't see it in the church world. I think if people get offended with something, they go to another church. If they get offended at their job, they just go to another job. If they get offended in their marriage, they'll just go to another marriage. Mm -hmm. And the faithful man will abound with blessing. Amen. Quick story, and we'll be done for today. But there was a the first married couple that I ever married. Um, they had been, one of them had been married maybe once or twice, the other one two or three times. And they had, of course, the marriages that end because of uh, something um, un biblical. There was a biblical out. So this was the first marriage that I ever did. And um, I think they were in their mid 40s at the time. And in the ceremony, they did something that I'd never seen before. You know how people usually have um, Casey and Jojo singing in their wedding, or that they have us. that was us, the um, unity candles and the unity sand and all yep. this stuff. They decided to bring their family dictionary and put it on the podium. And in the middle of the wedding, they turned to the word um, divorce in the family dictionary. They grabbed scissors and hand in hand, they came over to the word divorce and they cut the word divorce mm -hmm. out of the dictionary. Mm -hmm. And they said that we will not use this word or threaten this word in our marriage. Yeah. I'm happy to say 15 years later, they're still married and also happy mm -hmm. because they cut divorce out of their vocabulary. And I believe that somebody needs to hear that today, that threatening to leave and threatening to quit and give up, that is low hanging fruit. Why don't instead you try counseling? Why don't instead you say, you know what? We're going to ride this bus till the wheels fall off and see what God's going to do Absolutely. to restore. Hey, we're out of time for the day, but man, I hope you enjoyed it like we enjoyed um, sharing this segment with you. Um, if you are not a subscriber, you want to be the first to get the content as it is released. We release a new show every Tuesday and Thursday on YouTube, a new podcast every Thursday on wherever you can find podcasts. So hit the subscribe button so that you can be the first to grab hold of this content. We believe that sharing is caring, caring is sharing. Make sure if this was a blessing to you, share it right now. And if this has been good, if it's not been good, it's okay, pray for us. But if it's been good, make sure that you leave a review right now because your encouragement really encourages us. And uh, just know that we love you. We're praying for you. We're looking forward to continuing to do life with you. Thank you so much for tuning in to Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. We will see you next time. Peace.